Good morning, Team Australia. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Quick one today. Let me see how quick it's going to be. 34 slides with a new theory backed up by data, uh, a new warning, and so much more. And I think the tide is turning from that GBTC dumpage. So let's dig in and see what we got going on today. But I do want to remind somebody, we did have... We have noticed a ramp up in scammer efforts. Remember, there were hundreds of fake me's on every single channel, like things like LinkedIn, I'm not on LinkedIn, all these other weird things, Telegram, I'm not on, people pretending to be me. I will never, it's been my principle for three years now, never reach out one-on-one. -on -one. I have no time. I work 24 seven, seven days a week. I have no time. And if somebody's giving you six weeks of their time to try and negotiate to give, give you all their money, they're a freaking scammer, okay? I will never ask for money. I will never ask you to send your assets anywhere. And easy way to prove they are a scammer, ask them to FaceTime or do a Zoom call. They will refuse because they are not me. All right, just block them. You know, they're everywhere. And shout out to the new team on Patreon. Trim now says, join Patreon today, long overdue. Well done. And thank you for being part of the family. And from Hannes Vessels, thanks for the great Patreon content. Welcome to you both. Thank you as well for being there. And this is Bitcoin only content playlist above. And we have 27 days to go. It's going fast. Let's get into some of the fun news regarding Bitcoin today. Now people are talking about bang, bang. <laughs> Facebook used to be the fang in the old days. Now people are referring to Bitcoin being a key disruptive portfolio asset, which is really cool, really awesome. And well overdue. <laughs> Only 14 years too late. Now, Bernstein came out with their new price target for year and Bitcoin. It's not very exciting, but I share all the news, so good or bad. Uh, this is from, let me see, Bernstein. They said Bitcoin should be $90,000 by the end of the year. Not bad considering it's like 64 now compared to traditional markets. That's amazing. But with a new bull cycle, strong ETF inflows, aggressive miner capacity expansion, and all-time high miner dollar revenues, we continue to find miners compelling buys for equity investors seeking exposure. That was interesting. Not only they're giving you a Bitcoin price target, but also telling you to buy miners. Woohoo! Let's see. And uh, what else is going on in the world? Probably a ton of more stuff. First of all, breaking 100. <laughs> Mr. 100 bought 15 times in the last 24 hours. And this has sparked a lot of interest. People aren't sure exactly who it is. I don't know who it is, but I got a number of theories. And I know it's being bought on an exchange called Upbit. But it has all the earmarks of not an exchange wallet. It's somebody buying Bitcoin and socking it away in a very special exclusive arrangement. I don't know if it's a Korean billionaire, a Japanese pension fund. I don't know if it's Qatar, but it's somebody big. And it's not Sailor. Okay, I don't like a Sailor because he, he doesn't do it that way at all. And they have over three and a half billion dollars invested in a very short window of time. So it's somebody with a lot of money or some organization or some pension fund or whatever. But that's just the beginning of the story. There are rumors that a lot of Asia is now buying. Chinese have been stealthily buying for a long time. We know 22 new ETFs are coming to Hong Kong in April. There's so much more stuff going on. But now we have proof. We have proof Asia is stacking Bitcoin. This is a beautiful chart from Glassnode. Thank you, Andy. Good morning, Team Australia. Again, this proves that coins have been moving from west to the east. West being places like North America and the East being places like China, Hong Kong, Korea, Indonesia, Vietnam, etc. And this makes a very strong case that somebody is stacking over there in Asia. Maybe, maybe the Hong Kong ETFs are going to be far more bullish catalyst than the US ETFs. Can you imagine if that's the case? But here, per this chart, you see the European Union has been drained a little bit. North America, etc., the West, US has been drained a lot. And all of that Bitcoin flow is going to the East. All right. So this is no longer a rumor or an idea. It's proven with on-chain data, which is nuts. Now, why 
is Asia stacking hard. And remember, Asia has a lot of money. A lot of money. Don't think all the money's in the U.S. No, 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 no. That's, that's a lot of money in Asia. So there's a couple of different ideas. One, Japanese pension funds. The Japanese government pension fund, GPIF, was the first one to start sniffing around Bitcoin because they need a hard asset to fill their hole. Uh, there's also now a second largest pension fund in Japan. I forget the name, but they are looking into Bitcoin as well as a portfolio hedge and a hedge against inflation and a hedge against their currency debasement. Then we have Mr. 100. We don't know, no idea who it is, but you can see it there. Then we have the urban legend as well. In place like Japan, there was apparently somebody who spent 100 million yen on Bitcoin in 2010 and became a multi-billionaire. And people talk about that a lot on the streets of Japan. So the Japanese are interested in maybe pulling that off again. Also, South Korea is a very active market for crypto. Crypto trading, I proved that many, many months ago in Okta. Uh, and they are a little bit degeny and they trade very fast. Um, but they're also probably stacking some Bitcoin. And they have traditionally stacked Bitcoin for a long time because of something called the kimchi premium, which is basically the delta in the price between Bitcoin in South Korea and the West. And this kimchi premium has been as high as 50% in the past, which has made Bitcoin trading, that arbitrage in South Korea, very profitable. Also, China. China has banned cryptocurrency trading. Many Chinese investors, however, are still buying through peer-to-peer -peer networks and overseas exchanges. And this is seen as a way to protect their wealth, especially with what's happened to the property market in China. And then we have the 22 ETFs coming in April. They're just some of my seven thoughts as to why. Asia stacking and why they could have a lot more impact than the US ETFs, the nine new ETFs, which have been completely mind blowing, melted my expectations. We'll get to all the data around those in a minute, too. Thank you so much, Obsidian, as well, and Nick M, and the whole gang in the Modson chat, and K8, and Sean Donnelly, and everybody else. I appreciate you. All right, let's talk about record breaking drainage. Again, this is the story. If this did not exist, remember the people selling GBTC are not investors and rotating into IBIT or FBTC or anything else. They are speculators, okay? And we had a massive, just to show you exactly how much of this was in that cash and carry trade, speculation in grayscale, massive, 47% down now, off a cliff, nearly 50% down in just so far year to date, <laughs> which is stunning. That's uh, almost $20 billion of market value. And we are probably weeks away from there slashing fees to stop the bleeding, if they can even stop that. But again, my theory is most of this money is from speculators. And we know that for a fact, too. We back up with data. So let's look at a visual of what it looks like. Now, today, I'll also prove that the drainage from GBTC will be a little less than normal. But here, they had $358 million out yesterday, about 5,700 Bitcoin. And if outflows consist you know, continue at this pace, they'll be out of coin in 50 or 60 days. Then it's bye-bye, Grayscale. <sighs> can we wait that long? Yes, we can. And then it'll be rocket boosters on. Now, a lot of people say as well uh, that no, they're going to continue trading. Well, look at this. So this is yesterday, 300 million yesterday, all the flows from Coinbase. Again, Coinbase Prime for sale. This brings the outflow to approximately 3 million. But today, only 40 million so far. That could be it. And that's a significant drop in the amount of Bitcoin drainage from Grayscale, considering what a horrendous week it's been for them. I can just imagine Michael Sonnenschein sitting there watching, <laughs> you know, thinking, he's probably doing his math. He's like, okay, I've got 639,000 Bitcoin here, and I'm going to be making 1.5% in fees on that for the rest of my life. And then 49 days later, half gone. They have to redo the calculus and reset their fees. And that's also happening. Now, we have to talk about Grayscale a little bit more because this is some breaking news. This is from Seyfert. He says the Gemini Genesis account of something like 68 million shares of GBTC, which is about $4 billion worth at today's prices. And this should all be gone now. I thought it was gone a week or two ago. And I was wrong, and so was everybody else. But others say it won't affect anything because it is a straight GBTC to big Bitcoin swap in kind. I don't think so. I don't think so. I believe, as Whale Panda believes, this Bitcoin is not hitting the market. 
they are moving into different assets. They speculated on the ARB between Grayscale and Bitcoin. That's why they're in there. That's why this whole thing is... Grayscale is a huge part of the cause of the whole problem that we went through in 2021. Anyway, um, another news too. Bitcoin news only. Yay. <laughs> Bitcoin demand has seized the highest level since 2022. So despite what people will tell you, there are people buying it all over the world. In fact, I did cover as well Argentinians buying Bitcoin hand over fist instead of dollars. And that is because they also need a hedge, like the Japanese need a hedge, like the Lebanese need a hedge, like everybody, everybody needs a hedge against fiat because it's a big melting ice cube. Now, the eclipse time of when IBIT will eclipse GBTC, that's coming in fast by this calculation. We are $200 million away. <laughs> that's not much. And remember, the Bitcoin flowing in to IBIT is from money, not from the GBTC drainage. Remember that, everybody. Remember, a lot of people are still trapped because of capital gains taxes. And this is fun. The 1% Club, as I now call it, Sailor and BlackRock IBIT, both now own more than 1% of all the Bitcoins. Now, that's assuming 21 million Bitcoin. But remember, as I've always said for years, 5 million is lost. So there'll never be more than 15 million, maybe probably 14 million Bitcoin. But it's also time, perhaps, for another convertible offering by MicroStrategy, which is now lagging IBIT. Again, it's an infinite glitch in how money works. It's beautiful. What's MicroStrategy going to do next? Well... Looks like it's ready for a bit of a pounce. Uh, Bitcoin Munger believes this too. MicroStrategy has that look about it. Uh, it's about to run back to $2,000. This bodes well for, micro, for Bitcoin as well. This is why we talk about it. Because MicroStrategy leads Bitcoin price directionally. If MicroStrategy goes up, Bitcoin follows. And this is the one hour chart. And you can see here the price filled the gap and it's sitting on a volume shelf. The super trend, long signal is there. MACD is bullish and accelerating. RSI is bullish and accelerating. And anybody shorting Bitcoin now needs their head examines. Examine. Blah. Not enough coffee today. I was so busy, I forgot to make my fourth and fifth and sixth coffee. Anyway, let's talk about the short squeeze as well. That could actually be on the way. Uh, late longs were cleansed with consolidation that's very clear from the chart here now the market makers are greedy and they like to go for both sides so is there a short squeeze coming well per this data it looks like there could be remember the money runners the market makers they know what they're doing they can see all the leverage as clear as day and they're ready to pounce and grab it okay they got rid of the longs now it's time to go for the shorts. So is there a Bitcoin short squeeze coming? Probably. Is there a MicroStrategy short squeeze coming? Pro probably. So it's going to be a good weekend. And we deserve it because it's been... We did have a nice bottom on Tuesday. I did call the bottom at 61K on Tuesday. And since then, we are at... Uh, actually, let me check the real-time price. We we're basically 64. So 3,000 off the bottom. But it's great time as well because we saw a lot of on-chain action where retail investors that forgot to pack their bags didn't have to buy at 73,000. They could fill their bags at 61. So well done, everybody who did that. Now, uh, let's get on to some more news. IBIT is ramping up again. Very important. I'll go through all my detailed charts in a second. But you can see here, after two very weak days, we're back. Quarter of a billion dollars into BlackRock IBIT. A quarter of a billion dollars is not to be sniffed at. That's a big bag of money. And in other crazy news, people are saying, oh, people are losing interest in the ETFs, etc. Well, look at this. This is some history here. IBIT and Fidelity have taken in a positive flow for 49 straight days. Tomorrow will be 50 straight days looking at the volume right now. And only, only 30 ETFs in the history of the world have done that out of the gate, out of thousands of them. Okay? That is huge, everybody. This thing is special. This is rarefied air. Again, another history record for the ETFs. Let's jump into the black hole data. First of all, macro view of the charts, day 49 numbers. It was nice to see the deep red from GBTC has now gone to orange, minus 358 yesterday, probably only minus 60 to 100 million today, which is nothing. And 
BlackRock is ramping up. And it's also nice to see a nice spread across ARC, uh, HODL, EasyBC, all Vanek, all the other guys out there, all beginning to get some money into their accounts, which is nice. Fidelity, a very weak day at 2.9, but that'll be about, I don't know, 20 or 50 tomorrow, I reckon, based on volume. Now, this is kind of a visual of the flow. Green is grayscale. You can see it's slowing down, and it'll be very slow today as well. And BlackRock is picking up, so BlackRock will smoke GBTC probably by tomorrow morning when I do this report again. Say We had the seventh worst money flow day ever from 49, which is not bad. We'll take that. It's been a rough week. Huge dumpage again, as I mentioned before. And the money now is flattening. I anticipate that little red arc there will go up tomorrow. Let's see if I am right. And there's still $24 billion of inflows into the nine new ETFs, despite, you know, $15 billion more out of GBTC. These nine new puppies have taken in a lot in 49 days. And the actual amount of Bitcoin lost, 255,000 by grayscale, 195,000 plus 255 into the new ETFs. That's 450,000 in total. We did hit a high of 454,000 Bitcoin in the nine new ETFs. That's fallen by 4,000 over the, this week. But uh, I expect it to be back again soon. And in terms of how many came back into the system, the title is slightly wrong. The amount that came back is only 1,436 yesterday. It was 3,854 on Wednesday. I forgot to update the title. All right, before I let you go, two beautiful quick charts. Again, some more history. Who wants a little more history? This one is exciting. First of all, short-term holders are capitulated. They were the lettuce hands per, again, Bitcoin Munger. You can see the short-term holders in losses sold. <laughs> they went in and bought 68K plus up to 73 and they sold, they capitulated. And that's also a very good sign that the bottom is close. Okay, so uh, the big question is, are they going to be forced to buy back in at a higher price? You know, buy high, sell low. That's what these short-term holders are doing. Typical retail mistake. If you are a retail investor and you are playing with crypto, set your emotions to the side. You'll be far better off. Now, historic chart. Ready? This is exciting. We are on the verge of breaking a record that has not been broken in nearly 13 years. Ta-da! If we can sustain this level, if we can stay above 59K, which is very close to the short-term holder cost basis, I think, this will be the first time we've had seven green monthly candles since 2012. Again, that is historic. Very historic. As I said before, this time is very different the last time we had that, the price went from $4 to $12. <laughs> this time, all right, over the last seven months, we've gone from 25000 to 66000 all, all the way up to 73000 at one stage. Okay, 25 to 73 that thing has nearly tripled in just over half a year. Okay, that's exciting alpha. That's the alpha that's getting the attention of Asia and everywhere else in the world for many different reasons. Store of value, inflation hedge, fixing holes in pensions, you name it. It's the hardest asset in the world. And we love it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to subscribe to the Bitcoin Only channel if that's what you like. Uh, thank you to the mods in the chat. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. I've got to go do some tax preparation with my accountant this afternoon for sins from a previous life. Nothing I dislike more. Thank you all for coming. See you later. Bye-bye.